everybody welcome back to my channel and if you're new my name is Christy today I'm gonna to be talking about what we call a root tap a root smudge or shadow and a root melt I'll show you how I apply it I'm gonna tell you what the differences are among them and I'm also going to show you my favorite products to do this so we have a lot to talk about I have a lot to show so let's get right to it First, it's important to note what are the differences between a root tap, a root smudge or shadowing, and a root melt. And even though these words are used interchangeably, the differences in the application process, the end result, is noticeable. So it's important for you to know the differences when you go talk to your hair colorist and you explain what you want. Sometimes if you say that you want a root melt, that's not exactly what you were looking forward to if you wanted to be more blonde and maybe all you wanted was a root tap but you said you wanted a root shadow and so I want to tell you what the differences are between these names okay and these applications so first of all a root tap is just an application of a toner this toner could be the color of your base natural hair or the color that you dyed your hair maybe even a shade darker and what it is is you apply it to the root and only bring it out about a half an inch i'm going to insert a picture here of the differences between them and how they're applied so basically a root tap is just going to give you some darkness right at the root and this is perfect for people who have highlights and want to have that rooty kind of look but still want to be very bright and it's usually applied especially in the front part of the hair and also the root tap when you apply it they apply it or you apply it to yourself to just the closest part to your scalp maybe a half inch down and they may melt it into the rest of your hair but just a little bit just enough to diffuse it but they really don't drag it down so the next process is the root smudge or shadow and we've heard it a lot and so it's like the in-between of a root tap and a root melt so you're not committing to a root melt but you're not as bright as the root tap it's right there in the middle and I think it's what most people go for so basically you're gonna apply it like an inch from the scalp and then you will kind of melt it in and distribute it, distribute it to the rest of the lengths to, of your hair but once it touches the colors that you're going to use to probably tone um, your highlights and the rest of your hair and you comb it out it just diffuses into the hair so beautifully and this is perfect for somebody who does want that a little bit of darkness and that rooty kind of look but doesn't want to compromise being blonde because you do like being blonde so it's like that happy medium between the other two and it's perfect for somebody who it doesn't want to be so high maintenance and going to the salon a lot so you could probably maybe go refresh this kind of look maybe even after 10 weeks or maybe two months it's also great all of these applications actually are great to diffuse any demarcation lines that you may get from foiling or foiling and slicing the hair and and especially if there was any bleeding or any mistakes during the application of the highlights this is perfect for that but it also looks so natural it just looks beautiful it's my favorite now the next application is the root melt and obviously the root melt is going to come down even lower so when you apply that darker tone to your roots you're also going to bring it down maybe up to two inches or a little bit more and you're going to distribute it into the other toner the other color and just distribute it down a little bit further and comb it out with the comb and you'll almost get that balayage effect this is perfect for a person who kind of wants to be a brunette but also likes the lightness and you could go a long time without again going into a salon again to get your highlights done I also love this kind of application of all three of them for the people who have gray that or just change their base color of their hair and so they have a double process when they go to the salon right you cover with dye and then you do their highlights but 
when you do this, you kind of get away with maybe if I had the double, pro the double process today where I had my hair dyed, I covered my gray, I had highlights, and I go next month because my grays are gonna be out again. Instead of doing highlights again, I can just apply my base color to cover my gray, or just lift my base, whatever it is I'm doing, and I don't have to get into the whole highlight ap application. So it kind of saves um, time when you go to the salon and money because we don't necessarily have to do highlights every month, right? It's, and if you had this, you don't need it. So if you guys are enjoying the content of this video and you learned something or you like it, give me a thumbs up because not only does it help grow my channel when you do that or you subscribe to my channel, but it also points me in the right direction for when I make future videos. I kind of know what you want from me and I, I know what content to create and it points me in the right direction. I also like the root smudge or shadowing and even the root melt for especially like this time of the year where we're transitioning from summer to fall and you could kind of change your look up without making a drastic change and maybe going a little bit darker and just go with the seasons. It's just a fun way to mix it up without really committing to a look because also when you're applying a toner, it's usually a demi-permanent color, a semi-permanent or a, um, a temporary color. So it's not a color that you're committing to, it's not permanent. So it will fade away evenly while you wash your hair and between salon visits. So now I'm gonna show you how my hair looked before I applied it, when my highlights were fresh out of the foils, and how I apply the product to my hair and what products I used. Okay, so this is what my highlights look like basically straight from the foil. All I did was wash it and straighten it so you can really appreciate what they look like before I do any of that. And at first glance, you may think, well, you really don't need a root tap or a uh, root shadow because they're nice and thin and you don't have strong demarcation lines. But actually, I do. The thing is that as I start to wor work towards this part of my head, I try to make very little, like very fine baby lights. So mm, if I'm in a rush, I probably won't have to do root tap there, even though I tend to do it anyway. But as I work towards the back, I make them chunkier. For example, this part down here, you can see that I basically sliced and so you could see a demarcation line. So we're gonna try to get rid of that with um, the root shadow. And also, when I work towards the sides of my hair, you see these lines, I really don't like to see them. So on this side, you can also appreciate how it, I have like a demarcation line right here and I also like have some noticeable lines over here, which it does look pretty, but it can look better. The attention is like to the details, right? That's what's gonna make it look really nice. But what I wanna do is basically just soften those lines, and as the hair grows out, it'll look a lot more natural than if I just leave that line there. As soon as I have some hair growth, you're gonna see where my highlight started and where the new growth is and I'm gonna have a line. So if I just kind of smooth that out with a root tap, it's gonna look a lot better. As I work and highlight towards the back of my head, my highlights get chunkier because I want you to be able to see it through the hair, like kind of that peekaboo effect. So this is the part where you can get creative and I think most hair colors do do this. As I work in the front, I'm probably gonna leave my toner on less time because I want it to be brightest around the face. So this is where I'm gonna work last. You can use these techniques all over the head on one head. Like, it doesn't have to be just one technique and that's what you're gonna use on all parts of your head. You can play with it and just be creative and do what works for you and what makes you look nice. So in my case, I like to be brighter in the front and a little bit darker in the back. And also, as a toner for today, I'm gonna be using the Schwarzkopf Expert Mousse. And I'm gonna be using it for my toner for the root tap, which is gonna be a level five. That's my natural base color. And I'm gonna be using a 9.51, that's an ash. And since my highlights did come out to a level nine or higher, I know it's gonna take well on the hair. I chose this product because I like the way temporary hair products like this, these kinds of colors are acidic. This means that it will never shift your base or lift your level. You'll never see any kind of warmth after you um, remove the toner from your hair. And it just like, it glosses it and it makes the cuticle lay flat. So 
it's never gonna penetrate into the hair, that's what I'm trying to say. And it's also less damaging because of that, and it is ammonia free. Now, I have used other toners like the Schwarzkopf Vibrance, which I really like, and it comes in a gel consistency, and you could either mix it with an activator cream or an activator gel, and it works really nice as well, and it is acidic, but it says that it produces 40% less alkalinity in the hair while it's processing. What, when I hear that a toner is alkaline, to me that just says that on virgin hair, it's going to shift the base and you will see some warmth in your hair when you remove that toner. I'm not saying that it's going to look like you have hot roots, I mean, it could, but it, I do see a shift and it's not dramatic, but I do see it. So, and I'll see it when I use a higher tone like a 9.1 ash that's when I'll see it. Now, if I apply the vibrance to my roots, I'm not gonna see it because I'm gonna be using a level five, which is my natural hair color, so there will be no shifting because I'm not using something that's lighter, if I hope that makes sense. There are other toners like the Redken um, Shade TQ that are completely acidic. They won't shift your base, so just keep that in mind. When you're choosing your toner, try to find out if it's alkaline or acidic because if it's acidic it's going to be more gentle on your hair and you'll never see a shift of color especially on virgin hair i'm also going to damp my, dampen my hair because you always have to follow the instructions of the product that you're using but when it comes to toners i find that there's a sweet spot if your hair is completely wet and saturated the product isn't going to penetrate in your on your hair as well and it'll also fade a lot faster but if your hair is dry your hair is going just to absorb that product completely and if you have over processed hair or highlights that came out that are like really white you want to stay away from that because it could make your hair look extra ashy and that's not what you want either and it's also harder to apply when you apply toners to damp hair it just slides so much easier the application process is easier and since we are going to be applying a darker color to the roots and then uh, just a, like a level 9 toner to the ends and the mid lengths I'm going to kind of blend those together and melt them together and I need it to be able just to glide on the hair and just distribute easily on my hair so I'm going to dampen my hair but it's not going to be extra wet and I'll be right back to show you that Okay, so now my hair is damp, and what I'm gonna do is section it off into quadrants. So I'm gonna be using the Expert Mousse, like I said, and the one that I'm going to be using is 5-0, like this. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna put it on the brush, and I'm going to start applying from the bottom up. Basically, I'm just applying it maybe like an, an inch, and then when I apply the other product, I'll just drag it down. I also like applying these kinds of products to the roots of the hair, especially if you make a mistake while you're um, bleaching and you get some bleeding out of the foils and sometimes you end up like with a little spot or a stain that's uh, from the lightener on pieces of hair that weren't supposed to be lightened. So if you use something like this, you totally get rid of it as well. If you want to use it um, like to tone or just refresh a color, you could leave it for anywhere from five to 20 minutes. I mean, even longer, but you do have to wash it out. And with this product, if you washed your hair previously and you apply it, all you have to do is rinse it out with water. And it doesn't smell like a chemical product or a hair dye. It has like a nice shampoo scent to it. You, I am applying it like if it was a liquid color because I applied it into the bowl even though it was mousse but when I apply it it goes on the same but there is no dripping and there is no mess I'm gonna work on the other side and I am gonna apply the mousse 9 ash I am gonna apply it to the lengths of my hair but I'm gonna finish this darker color first you see how I brought it down? You're gonna see how nice that blends. When I'm in the salon with my clients, I always like to tell them like, 
like this is a product that they should have. <laughs> this is what I recommend that they take home. Maybe not necessarily for this kind of root shadow or, or root tap process, but in the color of their highlights, like just um, to tone and get rid of any brassiness that they may see over time as they wash their hair. And they take it home, and even if they don't get brassiness, it just makes the hair glossy, it makes it shiny, and it kind of provides some moisture to the hair. So you know how sometimes blonde hair tends to look like dry after time and it loses that, that shine? Well, with a product like this, if you apply it once a week or once every two weeks, your hair is super healthy the next time you go to the salon, and you may have to visit the salon even less frequently than if you weren't maintaining your color at home. It's so important. When I finish this part, I'm gonna directly start applying the lighter toner, the ash, to my mid lengths in the ends in the back, and then I'll start working on the front because I'm not gonna leave it on long at all maybe five minutes at most. And I'm gonna be using a 9.5 dash one. So it's a little higher than a nine, which is perfect because my highlights are quite light. And this, I'm just gonna apply to my lips like this. And then just comb it, smooth them together. <laughs> So what you do want is you want the lighter toner that you're applying to your mid lengths and, and ends, you do want that toner to touch the darker toner and you kind of want to melt them together with your fingers and like mesh them together. That's where the melting process begins. One color dissolves into the other. And you just keep on applying it, mixing them together with your fingers. I'm also gonna insert a clip of a video that I made using the gel uh, toner Vibrance, which is more, has a liquid consistency. And I did it and I just wanted to show you that process as well. It's exactly the same process, except you're applying it from a brush, from the bowl to a brush to your hair. And it could get a little messier, but I wanted you to be able to see it as well. Now I'm going to this side and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I, I don't know why I don't see more people doing this or using this. Maybe because this is an older products and different products have come out on the market and they prefer those. But I just think this is such a safe bet. Especially if you're doing it at home and you're doing it on yourself. Like it's goof proof. I don't think you could really mess it up that much. And if you did, it's gonna wash out. And it's gonna wash out like evenly. You're not gonna look like you have any, like when your hair color grows out. No, because it starts to fade out of your hair with, with the times that you wash it. And so it fades so evenly and beautifully that even if you did make a mistake, it's not gonna last long. You could already see how it's processing right here. Okay, I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm just going to apply it very closely to my scalp. You see that? I don't love the way that looks, so I wanna get rid of it. As I get to the front, I just even apply less product because I really do like the way the front looks, even though the, I don't love to say that when I pull it back. So I am gonna apply it there, but just leave it on a very short time. You see, just basically just touching it. And here on the top, I really like the way they look. So I'm just gonna just slightly pat it. And I'll do this part after I finish the whole thing. And here, that I totally wanna cover. And you kind of can apply it as you see fit. Like if I don't see that I need a lot, sometimes I'll just jump that part and it's not gonna make a big difference because since I am using the same color of my natural base, if I miss a spot, it really doesn't matter. Okay, now I'm going to apply the 
0.51 ash that I was applying before. I bring it up, kind of mesh them together, pull it down, comb it out. I'm gonna now start working here in the front. This is the darker shade. As you comb it out like this, that's where you're just doing like that melt effect and you're blending them together. And it kind of like the way the comb passes over it and combs through it, that's the same effect that you're gonna get. So now I'm just gonna keep on applying it, bringing it close to here. The product is the same all over the head, except for how much of the darker shade am I going to apply to my roots to make it come down lower, like um, a root blend or a root melt, and or if I'm just going to shadow or the root tap. That's the only thing that changes. So I made a video a while back on exactly how I achieve the, the highlights, that kind of baby light, and... And in that case, when I toned my hair, I just applied the toner in a 9.5-1 because the highlights were so thin and they were so carefully placed that I had no need to do it. There were no demarcation lines and, and I, I didn't have the need to do it. I didn't want to do it and it was fine. But when you do kind of have this, these chunkier highlights and or you're slicing, um, this is a must. It'll totally change the look and make it just look so much better. Okay, this is my last piece. You can already see how the color is changing. I'm gonna apply a little of this here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go wash this out, dry it, style it, and I'll be right back. So I'm back and I did actually wash my hair with a shampoo. I just used the Olaplex shampoo and I just did it lightly and I put the conditioner in and I styled it. And I don't know if you notice, but before I actually start moving my hair around, look how shiny it looks. Like that toner just my hair looked like it was thirsty before, like dehydrated. And when you apply that toner, that tone on tone, it acts like a gloss and it just lays, the cuticle lays flat after you use it. So if your hair looked like you needed a haircut or it looked over processed, this is a nice way to keep that hair hydrated, to keep those cuticles sealed so you don't have to go get a haircut right away and you can kind of wait. So, and it also, as you're hydrating the hair and maintaining that moisture in the hair, your hair probably won't dry out as fast as it would if you didn't do this kind of application. So let me get right into it and show you. So on the top, I don't know how you, if you remember how it looked before, I still, I, I just left the, the toner on maybe like five minutes, that was it. But it was enough for what I wanted to do. Now, if I come over here to this part, the hair doesn't look white anymore. It has a nice ashy tone to it. And if I come over here to the sides, before this was a lot more noticeable when I lifted it up, and now the line is just softer, and I really like that. That's what I was going for. And it has an ashy tone to it, which I really like. I just messed up my whole hair. If I wanted something more drastic, I could have used the, the root shadow on the top or I could have used the root melt. I also could have left it on longer and I would have looked a lot more brown than it does blonde on the top. But that's not what I wanted to do. What I wanted was this. It's the look that I usually go for. So this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and until the next time, bye.